Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brandon. I'm here with Daners, uh, Trout Hackers. The purpose of this video is we've been doing a lot of snorkeling uh, lately on some local rivers and we found some really insightful things that we are then using it to help us become better fly fishermen. Give us some insights into the rivers, the trout habitat, the insect life, where the fish are. Um, help me out. Yeah, Dan. insect ratio, where the trout lie in the river. It gives you an idea of the topography, if you could call it that. Also gives you an idea of what the fish deal with from day to day, what they see. You can see the current and how difficult it is for them to feed. So you can understand how they're op opportunists. They can, uh, they don't want to expend a lot of energy to capture insects. And uh, it's a really cool glimpse into the underworld. All right, guys, what are we doing? We're studying fish and fish habitat and population of insects. And we're on the warm river. How many insects, like caddis, compared to stones, compared to mayflies. Just the makeup of the river. Yep, and then you get to know the river intimately and then you can come back and you can remember where the pockets are, where the weed beds are, where the big undercut banks are, where the fish hang out. You have a whole different picture in your head about so this is taking this is taking fly fishing next level. Absolutely, and I don't know why more people don't do it because, yeah, it's informative. Yep. So it's like and minimal <clears throat> cost. Yeah, I mean the setup that you got, new equipment. If it, you bought all the stuff new, goggles, snorkel, wetsuit. It'd be less than a paddleboard. Less than a paddleboard. But you got the GoPro too, so we're gonna get some good shots in there. Peyton's gonna. Get in there as well. <laughs> They've already had one run. It was really awesome, enlightening. Absolutely. I didn't think there were, they're not huge fish, but 14 to 18, probably 12 that I saw in, what would you say, a 32nd of a mile? Yep. Or less. We should yeah. go over and see. Do you think that that big brown is still sitting there? Well, maybe. Maybe. Get him on the GoPro. And the little fish, the fry. Good and healthy river. Lots of fry. Yeah. I want to... Alright, we're going to follow you guys down. See you later. you see here that um, that's Peyton, my 12-year-old. He's out there doing it too. And um, just a little side note how important it is to get our youth involved in not just the, the sport of fly fishing, but just the overall awareness of what's actually happening. Right? Absolutely. And it's, it's passing that mantle on to the next generation. It's so vital because our rivers are so threatened um, just because of the influx of people and the traffic, the boaters, the fishermen, and this is a resource that needs to be protected. And once it's appreciated, it's, a, it's protected. And so that's why we felt it was important to say this. Yeah, and I'd even argue to the point where it actually increases their, their uh, passion for the sport. Um, we did this snorkeling adventure yesterday, and I mean, we got home last night, and the first thing Peyton said was, Dad, let's wake up, five in the morning. Let's go, let's go fishing. Get out there and go fishing. Yeah, because they see it. It's, it's, yeah, they I mean, see the fish and it's just get like... Get excited about it and it's, it's a whole different glimpse too because it's a whole different world down there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really eye-opening. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna go through these some of these clips and, and kind of explain what what we're seeing and explain kind of the the habitat, what they live in and, and, and just the overall, just the, the ecosystem of a trout. As we were floating down the river, I started to notice that most of the browns were hidden deep under the undercut banks, and weed beds will cause uh, an undercut too. So I came up on this log, and you can see here as the video goes, I really didn't know that there was a trout there, but because of what I was seeing on the river, I was able to uh, stick the camera up behind a log. It's just above us there and we just happened to sneak up on a it was it was a fairly good sized brown trout but it really gave me insight as to where the trout especially brown trout because they're more nocturnal when they get older um, it also gives them protection from the ospreys and eagles and things like that they could still feed but it's just some really cool footage we sneak up on this guy and you can see him swim away and it was really exciting is a trout trophy so ideally, we've found that trout love to feed in a current that moves a foot to a foot and a half per second. 
that's ideal for them. There is a cushion that's on the bottom of the river where there's a tension between the current and the bottom, friction, if you will. So these fish will be hugging the bottom, they're hugging that log, and you can see the camera's coming up behind him. I'm actually hugging the log and I'm sticking the camera up behind him. But what he's doing is it's called a prime lie. And what that is, is it gives him cover. It gives him slow current to where he can feed. He's not expending calories. And he can just sit there, open his mouth, feed at leisure, and be protected from other predators. This is vital knowledge that you, once you understand this concept, you'll know where prime lies are in the river as opposed to a, a sheltering lie where they're not feeding and they're just specifically hiding and a shallow water, you know, there, dawn, bro. dusk, they'll move into shallow water and it'll give them a chance to feed top, mid, mid column and bottom. So here's my question. How would you, if, if you're trying to get this guy out of the river, like how would you approach them? Well, you want to come from behind because they can't see. He's in shallow water, so his cone of vision is very high. And you want to bring it just, you follow the seam right above him. Allow the fly to sink down. Um, approach and presentation, always. One thing I noticed is I, I floated down uh, the amount of fish that are hiding on undercut banks. And watching, you know, midstream, it also gave me a... Uh, a view of, of where the fish actually hide. So we'll be floating through the water and you can see it's fairly fairly shallow. But within those shallows, you'll come over something that's eight inches deep, just specifically on this river and obviously others. But then you'll get just a, a dish. And what that does is it, it creates a cushion for them. And, and again, it's that concept where a trout does not want to expend the calories to swim in a steady current. They would rather dip up into the heavier current and take the insects and then come back down where they're comfortable and sheltered. It, I am amazed at the beauty of, of the river and the whole, uh, just it's a, a whole different ecosystem. It's, a, it's the views and, and the feel that you get as you watch this video is really amazing and there's some other things that come up that we'll point out another added benefit of this that we noticed is there are small little treasures that come up that you find that you would never ever see and we found we what we believed was a bare bone a bear died and um it was just really cool little side note that happens when you do this stuff that is a hip bone God, that's a big animal whatever it is that's like the theme of a bear or something, something huh? yeah that's crazy yeah. what's awesome is there's that the insects are feeding on the marrow of the predator see a little and, stone yeah and the fish eat the insects and then the bear eats the, the fish circle, it's the of, circle life. of life baby Another bottle. See, that's the only good thing about this. All the garbage it's garbage. one thing that we do also, awesome. and we did on this trip, was there are whiskey bottles and beer bottles and cans and monofilament. We make it a point to grab those and carry them out. And we did actually carry bottles out and fish line just to clean up the river and help, help it out. And, you know, be uh, conscious of... Yeah, every little bit counts. Yes, it does. This is a good example of the undercut banks. We're just floating along right off the bank and this rainbow is tucked up underneath there at least a good foot in the shadows and I'm just inches away from him. There you can see him. And this happened continually all the way down the river. So if you've ever got undercut banks like this, hit those banks and you gotta be stealthy. Yeah, you gotta be precise with your casting and that's, that's kind of the, the cool factor of you know about fly fishing is the sport of it you know well it connects you to what you're doing um you become very conscious and very in the moment probably only like 16 to 18. yeah but the pound is just unbelievable fat huh so it's right here you wouldn't notice it's right here so you got a weed bed and then you got a pocket that comes down and then right underneath the pocket it goes from like well you can see my arm yeah it goes from there to like two feet deep, but up under the weeds, Just I'm like, there, there's got, he's like in the weeds, in the shadow. 
So he's for because Osprey will pick him off. Uh, but I thought, I bet there's something under there. And I was gonna get the camera going. Oh, uh, you right did. Right as I stuck the camera down, and he's like, Oh, now is your camera on? <laughs> no. Oh, dang. <laughs> but he's they are somewhere. tucked up underneath. Well, you know, it's the same thing at below Ashton. And I love yeah. what you just said right there. You Did know, a lot of times, it? sometimes we think that like the river bottom is just like this flat. It's like carpet in our houses and it's just, you know, it can float or fly through there. And uh, that was really insightful for me. Yeah, it's and there's no surface indication. Right there where, where you're floating down, you wouldn't, you know, being underwater and seeing where the fish are, I literally came over the, the grassy uh, shallows and then it dipped down and there was a good five to eight fish that were just beefy and now we know we've tagged that area next time we come to the river we can walk down there we've got it marked we know the fish are stacked up and then it's a matter of fly selection and presentation you've just eliminated a lot of your problems when you're on the river yeah it's it's it's, it's a whole new world i mean there, i mean sometimes you can see like surface level you see there oh there's a big boulder there because it's kind of bulging and there's mm -hmm. some pocket behind it but for the most part I mean, you're oblivious. Yeah, you look at that right there, it's just slick and it's hard to read. I bet, I bet they're stacked up every day, right here. Yeah. Look at that cat is coming off. I saw a mayfly too. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, and this is the actual footage of what Dan was just talking about, what he had floated through. And those are some decent sized rainbows. Yes, they are. They're 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 pretty big boys and, and that's you know, ten feet above it where the and you could see me in the river and uh they and and once i was 10 feet down the river they were gone the, the trout were all stacked up right there specifically in that area because it met all their needs it was funny is like right there like 10 minutes earlier there's a guy fishing like right there but he was hitting the banks so and not, and not there so sometimes we talk about hitting the banks hitting the banks but you kind of want to you want to kind of hit everywhere. Yes, and I fish like a shotgun. I'll fish certain. I'll I'll grid the river and I'll I'll cover a lot of area, five casts to each thing, and cover a lot of water. I right, this footage coming up here is pretty cool. Um, you know, our our entire lives we've we've been taught and we've heard things about whitefish and how they're not good and they're not healthy for the river and. Uh, trout can't coexist with rainbows or brown trout and they're nuisance fish and yeah. they're white fish you catch them you throw them up on the bank because it ruins the river and the trout don't want to be around them and they take over and and uh it was interesting to see this little video clip of this white fish here coming up against what i think is a, either a rainbow or brown i'm pretty sure it's a rainbow yeah and they're right together feeding together just like their brothers yeah i mean it's you know, and that's another thing is uh, you get doing this stuff, you start learning things and, and your observations dispel the myths. And that's that's a really cool thing. Another added benefit of, of doing what we've uh, talked about, getting out there and snorkeling and, and getting to see that habitat beneath the surface. Um, it's kind of cool because you get beneath the surface of all these myths mm -hmm. and the snowmers. Uh, it's kind of cool. A lot of really good things to do even if you're not snorkeling is to tip over some rocks you can see the stone flies here and I just roll over a rock in the midstream and they a little bit further you can see them in my hand but they're you know a good inch inch and a half by you know three eighths of an inch wide and a trout gets a meal like that um, he's he's good to go Brandon says it's river gold but um, the thing that's really cool about the stoneflies is that when they cannot exist in a low oxygen, unhealthy river, so it's it's indicative of a, a good healthy oh, river. A yeah, it's good. And you should always be checking out uh, aquatic life in the bushes, under stones, maybe take a net. Yep, I've used a scene scene net numerous times. Two sticks with a screen in between, and shuffle your feet above, and pull it up, and there you've got what the fish are feeding on. All right, so someone's watching this video. Like, what's the next step? What if, what if someone's like, oh my gosh, I want to do this. This is kind of cool. I mean, what, what would you recommend? Well, I'd highly recommend a wetsuit. It could be pretty cold. And it's a lot safer, the buoyancy of the suit. A simple snorkel set off of Amazon. I got a U.S. diver. It's really cheap. Um, and it's an amazing experience because not only does it give is it informative and and it teaches you more about how you can catch fish and where they're at but for me personally it intimately connected me to nature and to the ecosystem of the river 
and that it was a deep level it really impacted me and i hope it has the same effect on you guys yeah and that's that's another added benefit and i think we we probably said this before but um it's really cool it adds another dimension to your your fly fishing you know your repertoire that another arrow in your quiver uh to go out there and and now it's not just you know you're going out there and you're fishing and you're you think that you're reading the water you're reading structures and you think there's trout there you think there might be trout there feeding now it's like it's almost like that insurance like yes. oh no i've seen fish here under that bank next to the, i know a log's there yes but it you know for me it really helps when i'm frustrated and i'm like the feeder the fish aren't feeding i'm not catching any fish and you know you can the more and more you do it the more and more you understand the 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 habits and and why fish do what they do and you it will hone your skills to where that might be the tipping point to where you can become effective as opposed to going fishless for the day so here's the question can getting your snorkel gear getting out there can it make you a better fly fisherman absolutely absolutely how how can it do it well you understand the river and you can uh you get in the environment that the fish is in you're not standing above them fishing you are down with them in their environment seeing what they're seeing watching their habits where they're located all these things are for me as a fly fisherman have increased my skills have increased my knowledge and increased my connection to what i love and am passionate about and that's why i want to share this with you and we enjoyed beyond words yeah we how many how many people did we have that were like hey that's cool fly fishermen and recreation and recreation say why didn't we think of that we want to do that and you know all these guys it just it 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 makes people passionate about it that's what i love about it because the more people we get involved in this the more we're going to get these things the river's taken care of and and innovations in in new uh technologies to make it you know a better fly route a better fly line more people out there and and you know community consciousness and all that it's just empowering Hi, once again, this is Brandon and Daner from Trout Hackers. Hope you appreciated this video. We're gonna have more videos like this, some innovative things, because we wanna hack the world of trout. That's really our, our purpose here, and it's to, it's to elevate the game of, of fly fishing and, and angling. So please like the video, share it, subscribe to our, our um, sh subscribe, and even have notifications. We're not gonna bombard you with tons of videos and pointless, pointless stuff. We really wanna help educate people and uh, just bring awareness to the whole field of fly fishing.